Hi, this is Dr. Mark Rothenberg here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And I wanted to just take this opportunity to briefly explain to you guys um, the implications of the recent data that's emerging with anti-eosinophil therapies for eosinophilic GI diseases. We have data from the Alicos company on their drug called Lirantelumab. That was phase three data for EOE and EOG, or eosinophilic esophagitis and eosinophilic gastritis. We also have recent data that was released by AstraZeneca from their Messina trial, which is for their drug Benralizumab for eosinophilic esophagitis. It's important to note that both lirantilumab and benralizumab, those two drugs, work by the same basic mechanism. They deplete eosinophils in a safe manner in patients. Both trials showed similar results, and that was that the eosinophils were depleted, but the patient's symptoms did not improve compared to the placebo. So those results, which are independent results, which basically replicated each other's findings, strongly indicate that eosinophils aren't involved in the clinical symptoms of the disease. Patients often now are asking, what is the next step? Well, I don't work for those companies, and I'm simply a professor here at Cincinnati Children's, so my comments are just my personal ones. But I think that these results indicate that these companies are unlikely to be continuing to pursue these drugs for the indication of EOE. The jury is yet out on eosinophil gastritis, and AstraZeneca is conducting a trial called Hudson, which is assessing their drug, benralizumab, for eosinophil gastritis. But for EOE, this is very, these are very important findings because they really now shift attention away from eosinophils in terms of the drug therapies and onto other ideas and other therapeutic interventions, and they add credence or support to the idea that eosinophils are called in as secondary events, but the primary problem is more related to the adaptive immune system, which is the food-driven response, which is what we call the type 2 response, and there's a number of drugs now in development, particularly we know that dupilumab works very well for EOE, and now we need to consider that that, that drug, which is upstream of the eosinophil, may be useful for other eosinophil GI diseases, and it substantiates the value of a study that we're conducting in association with the Consortium of Eosinophil GI Disease Researchers called DGAS, which is a randomized controlled trial studying the effect of the drug dupilumab in patients with eosinophil gastritis. We're about halfway done with the phase two study. We're looking to um, finish that study as soon as possible. So these results really substantiate the importance now of looking beyond the eosinophil. And I want to thank the patients that really contributed to these two studies that were reported, including the Alicos study on eosinophil gastritis. These are disappointing results to some degree, but I want to congratulate and thank the patients that participated and their families because um, this is a successful trial and it is clearly indicated that we need to move on to other approaches. And that is a success. Now, drug development and getting ultimate FDA approval is a long path. These are often met with um, a lot of um, challenges. Thanks so much to the patients that contribute to the, to the studies, the information, and moving forward. I think that we're getting closer and closer to find other drugs, and dupilumab is a victory for eosinophilic esophagitis, the patients, the family, and science, and, and it's encouraging to see now that we need to move on to the eosinophil, beyond the eosinophil, and indeed there's a number of approaches now being taken to advance other drugs that will be useful. I encourage patients to continue to hold on and to be um, um, you know, excited to participate and to encourage participation um, in studies so we can move forward and improve the lives of people suffering from these diseases around the world. Thank you for your attention.